Hi, welcome back. Here's another video, and this one is on the graphical addition of vectors. So let's get going. Okay, so this is the process. I know we, we've been doing this in class a little bit, uh, but I wanted to give you the formal process. So we're going to add the vectors, vector A, vector B, and I know they're vectors uh, reading the text because they're bolded. So we're going to add vectors A and B graphically by drawing them together in a head-to-tail or tip-to-tail arrangement. So we're going to draw vector A first, then we're going to draw vector B such that its tail is on the head of vector A. Then we're going to draw the sum or the resultant vector by drawing a vector from the tail of A to the head of B. Or I like to say from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. Then we're going to measure the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector using a ruler and a protractor. Okay, now let's move on for some more information. Okay, so what we have here is I have vector A, the red vector. The tip, or I'm sorry, the tail is where we start. The tip, and we're going to add vector B to it. We're going to place vector B's tail at the tip of A. Draw it out, and then the resultant goes from the tail of A to the tip of B. The resultant is just the name that we give the sum in vector speak. So in mathematical notation, bolded again means vector. Vector A plus vector B is equal to the resultant vector. The resultant in the equilibrant. Don't you just love that word, the equilibrant? I can say it maybe two or three times before I stumble all over myself. The sum of two or more vectors is called the resultant vector. The resultant vector can replace any the vectors from which it is derived. I mean, if you add A, B, and C, you don't have to keep putting A, B, and C down. You can just put the resultant down. The resultant replaces the vectors from which it is computed. The resultant is completely canceled out, brought to zero, uh, by adding to it its inverse, which we call the equilibrant. It's the negative of the resultant. You put the point on the opposite end and it becomes the equilibrant. So the equilibrant vector is the pink or purple vector. For R, it's negative. R's point was up here next to the tip of B. The equilibrant vector, or the negative resultant, is the point is down at the beginning. It's how we bring our sum back to zero. And we call that the zero vector. Graphical subtraction of vectors. We subtract vectors by adding the negative of a vector. So a minus b is the same as a plus minus b. Okay, so graphical subtraction. Here's our vector B. We're going to take vector A, the red one, subtract from it vector B, and that will give us vector C. Well, to subtract vector B, we're really going to add the inverse. To turn B into negative B, we have to put the pointy end on the opposite side. Vector A plus negative B is equal to C. Graphical subtraction. Here's your multiple choice question. I'll give you a few minutes to work on that and then we'll get started again. Welcome back. Now we're going to do some actual practice drawing some vectors and graphically coming up with the uh, solution. So here we have vector A points in the positive x direction and has a magnitude of 75 meters. Vector B has a magnitude of 30 meters and it has a direction relative to the x-axis. I don't care about vector C for this problem so I'm not going to read it to you. We want to find vector A plus vector B, what that adds up to. So the first place, uh, the first thing that we have to do is we have to draw vector A. It's pointing in the positive x direction. It has a magnitude of 75 
meters. And then vector B has a magnitude of 30 and is in the direction of uh, 30 degrees relative to the x-axis. Okay, we're going to start out by drawing our vector. And I have vector A, 75, 30. So I'm going to say that one block is equal to 10 meters. So let me go ahead and write that down, the scale down, one division or block is equal to 10 meters. If we don't have a scale written on our graph, we need to so that we know what we're measuring. Okay, so I'm going to just pick a place here where I think things will fit. I'm going to go over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 5 meters. Yeah, make sure I put a point on it. I'm going to draw over that again. Okay, so that's vector A. Now we're going to do vector B. It's 30 meters at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the x-axis. So I'm going to grab my protractor, bring it over, place it so that it's lined up properly. Index mark is at the uh, tip of our vector, and we want to go over 30 degrees. And what I do is I put a little tick mark at the edge of the protractor. So 10, 20, 30. I'm going to just put a little dot there. I'll take my protractor out of the way. And now I need to bring my ruler in. And this is a huge ruler. And I need to find out the length of three boxes. Okay, so three boxes are one, two, three. It looks like it's about one and a half centimeters on this scale. So I'm going to bring it on up to 30 degrees, about bring it down and measure and put a little tick mark on uh, what is it one and a half and I'm going to bring my ruler out of the way now and I'm going to draw my vector okay so that's vector B and my resultant vector is going to go from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. And I'm going to label my vectors now. That's vector A, vector B, and a resultant. So we've graphically added, drew vector A, seven point, well, 75 meters, seven and a half blocks. Vector B, 30 meters at an angle of 30 degrees, so that's 30 degrees, and then our resultant. So all I have left now is I have to measure my resultant. I'm going to bring the protractor back in, and it looks like the resultant goes through like 9 degrees, so 9 degrees, and then I need to bring my ruler in so I can measure it properly. over. Okay, so it looks like it's about 5.2. Bring it down again just to make sure. About 5.2 and I'm going to put the ruler up so I can get the right scale. So 5.2 looks like uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, uh, 90, 
and maybe 0.1. So, or 91. 91 meters. 91 meters at 9 degrees. And this would be R. And the notation. Magnitude of the vector, comma, and then the polar angle. Okay, quite a few steps. It's not the most accurate. You have to be very careful with how you measure things, and that greatly influences your, your final results. Here's your free response question. Okay, we'll see you in class next time. Bye-bye.